If you'll indulge me a little bit this morning, we need to reminisce just a little bit. Sure glad to be back with everybody here. Though we may be far apart in miles and in years, you, you understand how precious you guys are to me. And I hope likewise, you know, we're just as close as we ever were. And we've experienced a lot through the years. And of course, I was, you know, the first preacher for the congregation here. And when we built this building, and I was thinking about this morning, I don't remember if Mike remembers, but um, I remember he and I being up here hanging drywall together, you know, a, a special bonding moment. Isn't that wonderful? But, you know, we all have different memories, different ones, some good, um, hopefully not too many bad ones. Do you remember my Bible? It used to be black. This has been a second cover. Now it's wore out. It's deteriorating. All the pages are tearing out, and I'm having to tape, and that's not good. I'm trying to transition to a new Bible, but, you know, that's difficult to do. And this is the King James Version. Somebody may look and say, well, why are you still holding on to a King James Version? Well, I know sometimes it takes a little bit extra effort to get the meaning to the folks, but culturally around here, you know, if you don't have anything uh, except King James Version, you're an apostate. You, you know, that was my experience. I remember studying with a fellow here in town and reading a passage to him and he reached over and took my Bible without my permission. And he opened the front pages to look to see what version it was. He's going to accuse me of reading out of them foreign Bibles. Now, I'm, I'm trying to go to the uh, New King James Version. That's modern, you know, that's real modern. Um, Got to be careful with a lot of versions. A lot of versions leave out some of the scriptures. Well, you know, we found these new manuscripts back in 1950. Oh, so God, for hundreds of years, had, you know, passages in there wasn't really valid. Okay, that's a discussion for another time. I mean, this Bible has, has been in a lot of places, a whole lot of places. It, it, you know, when it was almost new, about a year old, I, it was in Marion, down the mountain. And I was there and Somebody said, oh, let me see your Bible. And they took my Bible and they wrote in a birth. There it is right there. See that? Mindy Elliott, August the 6th, 1979. Teresa wrote that in my Bible. Many years ago in 79. Been there all this time. It's falling apart. My Bible is one that uh, went to Jamaica on many trips, preached down the Caribbean for a lot of uh, different journeys, uh, usually spent a, a week or two at a time. Jamaica can be kind of an odd place. I'd usually train up uh, 15 guys. Sometimes ladies went too, and we'd go down there and we would evangelize in the area. Had a couple of fellas that was down there, and you know they don't have guns down there, right? They've taken all the guns away, which I'm thankful. But they actually make guns out of bicycle tubings sometimes. But there's rough parts in Jamaica, just like there is everywhere. And of course, they have the Rastafarian religion down there, and you usually identify the Rasta men as you know with the big dreadlocks, or else they have it up in a big knit cap, and uh. They use machetes. I think it's called machetes. Machetes. They actually they cut their grass with machetes. And so my guys were walking, and uh, this roster man came up with a machete to them. And he raised his machete up as if to strike them and said, Do you believe in Jesus? And the guys, I mean, they were quaking and Yes, we do. And the guy says, oh, just checking. He walked on. 
So I was in an area that wasn't too nice by myself having a Bible study in Jamaica. And uh, my ride didn't show up. And it was going to get dark. And I didn't want to be back in there after dark. And I'd already been warned about this area. So here I take off walking. Me, me and my Bible. And we're walking. So everybody knows who I am and what I am. Because I have this great big Bible in my hands. So here this man approaches me. And corners me. I thought, okay, here we go. And he grabbed my Bible. He took my Bible out of my hand. Now, I guess I should have been thinking, was he going to kill me? Instead, I was thinking, I'm not going to get my Bible back. (laughs) You know? That's what I was concerned about. And so I would ease a little bit, and he would ease with me, and ease with me. And eventually he let me go and let me take my Bible. I like my Bible. It's tearing all to pieces. I was having a Bible study one time with a group of about four people. And this one young lady I didn't know, we were reading a passage in the Scriptures And all of a sudden, she reached out and laid her hand on my Bible and threw it across the room. It ripped the page. It's about wives being subjection to their husbands. I think that's what the passage was. But it ripped right down, you know, about Sarah and, you know. People have different reactions to the Bible. Did you know that? I love the Word of God. Do you love the Word of God? Do you get offended by the Word of God? It's a question we have to ask. I'm not saying that this is an idol. I I don't pray to this book, okay? It's an instrument to convey truth. But this truth is eternal truth that will lead us to heaven. In the book of Mark in chapter 8, if you'll turn with me to Mark chapter 8, there are the words of the Lord in verse 34. And these words mean a lot. All the words of God means a lot. But, but, but take this in because... This is fundamental. In verse 34, When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life, for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now there's a lot of information in this text, and we're told that if we want to be followers of Jesus the Lord, There are things that we have to deny to ourselves. But not only deny ourselves those things that are wrong, the sinful pleasures of life that Satan has to offer, but it says that we have to take up our cross and follow the Lord. And for Jesus to have spoken this, you know, in His ministry, before He actually died on the cross, He's telling us to take up our cross There's a great significance there. The cross is a horrible, terrible instrument of death. And of course we understand that the meaning is that we may not have a literal cross that we're going to be nailed upon, spikes through our hands and feet, but yet there are burdens that we have to bear that we have to carry, and we have to carry our cross. Sometimes it's a pretty heavy cross. What price do you have for your soul? 
What will you give in exchange for your soul? I mean, that's what Jesus is asking. And too many times our price is very low and very little. And we do not value our human spirit, who we are, while we live in this life. But we, we need to take stock. If our goal and our aim is accumulation of wealth and, or power or fame, Satan will give it to you. Satan will provide whatever it is that you want in exchange for your soul. So either we have no price or we have a price. Even if a man gains the whole world and loses his own soul, what shall he profit? So we come down to this. that Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words. Me and my words. I love my Bible. Not because it's a physical item, but because it contains the words of the Lord. And how can I not be ashamed of His words if I don't know His words? I have to know His words so that I understand that I am conforming my life to be pleasing to God. We are living in a day and age in which persecution may come. Actual physical persecution may occur in our lifetime against those who are believers. But if it's not persecution in a physical way, certainly it's a social ostracizing. It's a social persecution. That is here now and coming to every corner of our society. And thus we have to make a decision. Are you ashamed of the truth? Or will you stand up for the truth? Do you believe in Jesus? And the sword is raised above your head, the knife, the machete? Maybe not literally, but socially. Yes, I believe in Jesus. But it's not just believing in Jesus by paying lip service that Jesus is the Lord, but also embracing His teachings. Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you believe? What is our character? Our character, our belief, our faith is formed by the words of the Lord. And that's why we hold the same values. We believe the same things. We speak the same language. We are truly the family of God because we have voluntarily embraced the truth that the Lord has given unto us. And that is a beautiful thing. The Lord's coming again, and He's coming with His holy angels. And when he comes in judgment day, will he look upon you and have that look well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Or will the Lord look upon you and say, I'm ashamed of you. For you did not stand the test. My Bible teaches me many things. But it teaches me that I have to understand and learn it. In the book of John, in chapter 12, John chapter 12, there's a, a passage in John chapter 12 that if you were to read verse 47 in isolation, you would, might get the wrong idea. And there are multitudes of people that would love to quote John chapter 12 and verse 47 in which Jesus said, If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Oh, that favorite expression. You're judging me. When we speak out against wrongdoing and sin and error, frequently the reply is, Well, you're just judging me. You, you can't judge me. And if individuals have a little bit of Bible knowledge, they're not actually quote this verse. Where Jesus said, 
That if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. Uh, and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. But you see, they leave out verse 48. There's a verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. The same shall judge him in the last day. The word which I have spoken. And we have that word. There is a standard that will be used on judgment day. And it's the words that Jesus delivered unto us. You see, that, that's why I love my Bible. Do you love yours? I would like to see you wear out your Bible. I would like to see it come to a point in which it disintegrates. And, and you have to struggle with taping pages. I would like to see the time come when your Bible is so wore out that you have to try to re have it rebound. Or you have to just put it aside and go get another one and start over. Maybe multiple times in your life. I don't know. I've got many Bibles. This is the main one I use. It's falling apart. Did I say that? It's falling apart. It's... Pages are tearing. They're in decay. But I've preached out of this Bible to people in different countries. About a year ago, <clears throat> I almost uh, said goodbye to you guys. Quite serious. Heart attack. 100% blockage. With a blood clot on top. They didn't know it. They kind of upset the doctor when he found that blood clot in there. And I'm doing quite well as far as at being at a baseline where I can function and teach and preach. I'm not finished. Now, if the Lord says I'm finished, I'm finished. You understand that? I'm finished. I'm done. I'm not finished because we're not promised to tomorrow. None of us. Not a one of us. So what will we do today? Let's put forth our efforts to grow spiritually, to be a light to our family, to be a light to the community, to express our faith, to not be ashamed of Jesus and of His words. We can do that. We can give that gift to humanity. Not time for me to retire, not in this field. I would have been forced to retire concerning maybe other occupations and other fields of endeavor. I, let me tell you, I can't dig a ditch anymore. The physical manual labor, I'm just not, not able to do. I'll tell you what I can do. I can reach out and try to save souls. And you can too. In your own way. Using your own opportunities. Using the Word of God to show that I'm not ashamed of the Lord. It may not be popular. I may be the only one. But I can express truth. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of people out there that will, will give you honor for that. They may not say so, but they will give you honor. If you lose your soul, what have you gained? You've gained nothing. And that's why when we look at Bible subjects, there's no compromising. As, as we read the pages of the Word of God and we understand what the Lord is saying to us, that's where we take our stand. <coughs> we spoke this morning in our Bible class, you know, about different things, one of them being marriage. If you look back at Matthew chapter 19, we know that Jesus taught on marriage. The Pharisees came tempting him in verse 3, Matthew 19, verse 3, saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? He answered them and said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put us under. That's what he said. That's what I believe. I take my stand there. And Jesus puts the stamp of approval upon the Genesis account. He says the Genesis account is true. 
There is marriage. And there's a marriage between a man and a woman. There is no lawful marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. There is not. Our society may say that it's okay. And we're not the first society to say that. That has occurred in history, you know. But this is our country, our land, our society. And now the folks in black robes say that it's okay. But God does not join them. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. God didn't join them. Man joined them. God didn't join them. They pursued Jesus and said, then why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And see, he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Pretty straightforward. Don't see a lot of wiggle room there. The reason for fornication is the only reason to put away your spouse. And that's it. The world doesn't embrace this teaching, but we embrace it. Now, his disciples were obviously concerned and perhaps upset, I don't know, uh, because they questioned him. Well, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. Well, maybe you know, we ought not even take the risk of that. Let's just not get married. You know? well, no, 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 wait a minute. If this doesn't fit your situation, it doesn't fit your situation. If it does, it does. And Jesus had to explain that if we find ourselves in a situation in which we are not able to lawfully marry, then we need to live the single state. For Jesus said in verse 11, All men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there will be some eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. A, a eunuch is one, an emasculated man, who cannot engage in that marital relationship. Cannot. It's not possible. Sometimes it's because of a birth defect. Sometimes because of the in interference of mankind on purpose. Uh, you know, you read about the Ethiopian eunuch in, in the book of Acts. You know, he was a, a man that had a high government position. And a lot of times they, they made eunuchs of these young men so that they would focus upon the position they were trained to perform, being the treasurer of the Queen Candace of the Ethiopians. There's some who lives this way. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> who lives this way in order to go to heaven. <coughs> and that's where we need to focus our attention upon that if we find ourselves in a situation in which we cannot be married, <laughs> friends, you can still go to heaven. Rather you can still serve the Lord. You can be faithful. We know that unless a change of heart is evident within the person, it doesn't matter what physical characteristics they may have or have not. Repentance comes in the mind of, of man. And repentance is what is required if we found ourselves in a situation that we've committed error or wrongdoing, we need to come back to God. If we've left Him, we need to come back. We do that by having humility. The humility to say, I'm not ashamed of you, Jesus. I'm not ashamed of, of the Lord's words. I'm going to take up my cross. And I'm going to follow Him. And I'm going to live my life in such a way that whatever it takes, I will be faithful. And I'll see heaven as my home. 
That kind of faith leads you to repentance. A change of life. A confession of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And a burial. In which you bury the old man of sin, according to Romans chapter 6. You bury him in baptism. To bur- to be raised to walk in newness of life. Do you want the new life? Do you want the life that Jesus has promised to provide? I'm glad to be with you. I look forward to having a a fruitful meeting. But time passes by quickly. Let's get our priorities straight and right. If we can help you this morning in your obedience to the Lord, either because you've left and wandered away from the faith, it's time to come back. Or if you've never obeyed the gospel, we certainly will assist you. If you've got Bible questions, we are more than willing and happy to study the Word of God with you. Let's stand and sing the song selected. Jesus is tenderly calling me home.